We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. People call you a hero. Do you feel like a hero? With the landing of soldiers on a beach in Flushing, began on November the 1st, 1944, Operation Infatuate One. At the same time, the Sludam Causeway and West Capella were attacked. And so began the last decisive phase of the battle for the Skeld. The first ones who stormed the little beach near the Flushing Mud Harbour were English commandos. Uncle Beach was the codename of the small strip of sand, and behind it was a city full of bunkers and desperate Germans. It's got to be taken at all costs. Irrespective of casualties, it must be taken because of Antwerp. Slowly, the light of the narrators that were present that day fade out one by one. At the parting of every soldier that fought for people he didn't know and against an enemy he didn't know, we hear the words, We will remember them. Some of them are still amongst us, like here in the south of England, in a town called Weymouth. If you enter the sea here and keep going straight, eventually you will land on the beaches of D-Day. That is exactly what Arthur Robinson did. And two months later, the same was expected of him in Flushing. And I can honestly say, I was second man on the island. Yes, I can honestly and truthfully say that. It's a heavy fortification. We view the Battle of the Skeld and the liberation of Walcheren through the eyes of those who won the war. This way, the reality of the battle and the consequences of orders usually maintain a certain distance. It's only when we reduce the war to the memories of one single soldier that we can try to imagine what it was like for a man to kill another soldier with a gun, a knife or even with his bare hands. No one said anything about Arthur Robinson can be seen on this amateur footage taken six years ago. He was 89 then. He talks about the war in anecdotes. Well, all they said was the Molen. So we went straight into the Molen. And the amazing thing to me was that they were still in bed. There's a bit a barrage been going on and they were still in bed. But often there is a darkness to those stories. Well, they need to bother to get up because they didn't get up again. We cleared the lot. First one. As easy the memories came to Arthur then, they seem to have faded these days. Even when his son Tim tries to remind him of the stories he told so often, it looks like his father isn't able to go back to flushing coherently. To be quite honest, my that's a bit blank to me. Is that? I can't think of what's happening next. Did your father talk about the war a lot at home? Yeah, he did. A lot. When did that start? Uh, I think, basically, from when I was a small, I knew all about it. I heard all about it. Uh, I knew his stories off by art. And uh, it, it was a big, big part of his life. It did. It, it, it had a massive impact on his life. We moved on through the ruins of West Capelle, our first objective. 
We want to believe that honor, military code and the Geneva Convention were support for the soldiers in doing what was right. But the warfare of the commandos in the forefront of the fight was relentless. And one of the codes was, take no prisoners. Which meant that they had to execute the men they encountered, whether they were uh, surrendering or not. Did your father have to do that too? Yeah, he did. So I says, well, what the hell am I going to do with this one? He says, take him down that bank. He wants to go to the toilet. I says, what well, the hell is it, toilet? He says, take him down that bank. And when he props his trousers, you know what to do. And that I had to shoot him. And you're thinking, no, that they actually did these things. Now, I'm not exaggerating, but I killed many people. If you didn't kill, you wouldn't live. We killed everything we came across. And I killed quite, quite, quite a lot. But to shoot him in cold blood, and I was only a young fella. Very young. That got to me. That got to me. And, uh, but anyway, I got over it. So the thought that you killed these people, did it, did it bother you? No. No? No. I thought it was my job. He might get over it, but it'll still be, it'll still be there. And if, it, if he was reminded of it, he, he would, Mm, yeah, okay, you know. Or he, he doesn't, he chooses not, or he says he doesn't remember. Or, but he, he can tell by the look on his face, he does. Tim Robinson is right. Because however his father neutralizes the shocking memories, they eventually penetrate his defense. As I go, so go to bed tonight, and uh, I know, I go, I shall see faces. I shall see faces. And I do it every night of my life. First one. Arthur Robinson is a hero, even if he himself thinks he's not. He stood ready when the going got tough and risked his life for others, was a part of legendary operations, and did not give way when confronted with the dirty side of war. It was hard again. Yes. Very hard. That doesn't make him less a hero, but even more a human being. If he goes to fight, he fights. Who pays the price for all of that until the very end. As I sit here, looking around, I can see them now. You can see their faces? Yeah. 